So we just went grocery shopping and I took out all of the food from the cupboards and I have it all displayed out here. And I wanted to make a quick video to show you some of the most common items that we buy and we have in our pantry. And yeah, just kind of make it easier for if you're transitioning to eating more vegan, just maybe some ideas. My first one right off the bat is these Bolt House drinks. Mm. These are awesome. I have some of that. Not all of them are vegan. Um, I think there's like a parfait one that's not vegan, but like I would say like 90% of them are vegan. Delicious. And check them out. Like they tell you exactly how many fruits it has. One third of a banana, mango, kiwi, pineapple. A little bit pricey, but these are awesome. I love these. Yep. Where's the our big thing of rice? Okay, so <laughs> usually I go to the Asian market and I buy like a 15 pound bag of rice. This is all the rice that we have left. This holds 10 pounds. Um, we eat a lot of rice, of course. And like everything. Of course. So like tacos, um, like noodles, or not even noodles, sorry. Um, meatballs. Meatballs. Um, I make risotto with it. Um, rice is great. It goes just, in like everywhere. You can, it's the best carb. You know, really is. I always have a carb, a veggie, and like a protein, right? Right. <laughs> yep. And then your second favorite thing is just like munching right. on bread. Okay, so this isn't my favorite, favorite bread, but this is the only kind of bread they had. Usually I like this like super bougie rosemary olive oil, like sourdough loaf, and they didn't have that, but this is good enough. What is it that you put on there? You put some kind of like butter or something on it, don't you? So they have this vegan cheese. Is it in here? I don't have any right now. Oh. Um, they have this vegan cheese that's really delicious. They have like a rosemary one and I think like a jalapeno one. Um, I can't remember who makes it though, but it's really good. It's like a creamy cheese. Um, I've always been super weird about cheese. I've always like really hated cheese. Same. Never yeah, like cheese. It's just so weird. It tastes weird and it's gross. And it's just like the rotten process. milk. Yeah, it's the process. <laughs> it's like always grossed me out. Anyway, so it's like a creamy cheese, but usually I just like, you know. Munching on bread. Midnight, midnight snack, just some bread and butter. That's all I need. And me, I love chips and salsa. Where's that salsa? I don't know where I put it right now. Oh, right here. Oh. <laughs> and you know, salsa, chips and salsa. That's a great snack to have. Delicious. Yeah. So let's put everything that we, we've shown over here. Okay. Um, we also like snacking on nuts and stuff. Oh, and those fig bars. I discovered these recently. These are awesome. Look at these. Delicious fig bars. And I got um, these two. Blueberry. Don't they have raspberry. at least the same um, maker that makes the brownies that you like too? Yes, they do have a, a brownie one. Mm -hmm. And I just discovered, like, at the same time I discovered the brownie one, I discovered the fig ones. And, like, for the last couple of weeks, I've been really eating a bunch of these. Yeah, I've been going crazy. And you also like eating nuts. I don't really like nuts that much, but you eat a lot of nuts. Yes, yeah, sliced almonds. I put these inside of the cereal. We get the cereal too over here, don't we? No, you didn't bring the right there. Up. Yep. These containers are great. Yeah. Like they keep your food fresh and you can push the top of them. And you don't have a bunch of like half open boxes just messily hanging out in your pantry. Or like bags. Mm -hmm. So these are, what is this, Kellogg's? No. Uh, the cereal? Yeah. The cereal is Kellogg or Kellogg's, yeah, I think. But most Special cereals K. are vegan anyway. Yeah, but you're not gonna have any trouble finding vegan cereal. This is like our favorite though. Yeah. Probably would be better with like fresh. Fresh strawberries and yeah. bananas maybe. But it will do. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I take these and I put those inside the cereal. Cause it's like, once you, if you put a little bit of, you know, sliced almonds in anything, you just feel so full at the end. Yeah, so, and then for me, I like snacking on fruit. So I actually am super allergic to apples, raw apples, but um, I'll make like apple crisp with these. And I always have like a bunch of pears and kiwis because that's what I mostly snack on. I delicious. like fruit too. She doesn't really like bananas, but like bananas. I love bananas. Yeah. Um, so those are our snacks. Oh, what oh. else we got for snacks? And another thing is like when you're, when you're starting to eat more vegan, 
like sometimes you feel a little bit of deficient on something and usually it's like protein or iron but uh protein like you can get from beans and there's Nuts, like soy. soy soy is a bean but yeah mm -hmm. um and the other thing is usually iron and it's so awesome like how much iron is in like here is you know three cups of fresh spinach is, which is like this much spinach when it's cooked you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> it's got fifteen percent of your daily intake of uh, of iron in here. So so this has this whole bag has fifteen times three, forty five percent of your total iron intake just in this one bag. You just kind of have to integrate it into your diet. But spinach is like the easiest thing to like incorporate in anything, right? All you have to do is just throw it in there. It's not like it like adds like a weird texture or like adds like a taste to it. It's just like yeah, you can put it in tacos, you can put it in pasta, hot pie, noodles. It, it really goes rice, into like everything as a side, like rice, rice and spinach. Eggs. Mm -hmm. Match made in heaven. Yep. So I always eat a lot of spinach, it's brown greens, then. So my other greens essentials, I love broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Broccoli, another great source of iron. Never would have thought, but yes, broccoli has a ton of iron in it. But it's also important to note that like, because we're living RV life, it's really hard for us to like stock up on groceries. So we only buy like a little bit at a time. So like I would usually like, I love eggplant, but I don't really buy eggplant as much anymore because it's hard to store. It doesn't last very long, so I always get zucchini. I like that though because then, like, we we usually live in a place where we're like pretty close to a grocery store. So whenever we need something, we just go grab it real quick, and then you never have to worry about food going bad. Because whenever you're in a place where you can just stock up on a bunch of food, typically it just goes bad. It's very French. Is it? <laughs> yeah, that's what they they always buy. At least that's what I've heard. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm making some shit up, but. But I've always heard, you know, they, they go to the market and then they just get their, their stuff for the day, for the night, you know, for dinner. And then they go to the market every day. Just do that. Anyway, zucchini, Brussels sprouts. I know Brussels sprouts gets a bad rep, but dude. I didn't like it. I really dang. didn't. They They're are. really delicious. You got to roast them. Don't be steaming that, okay? Or boiling that. That's Is that just how you gross. do it? Yeah, I you roast, roast them. them. Don't be boiling your damn Brussels sprouts. I think that's how I had them. And I Don't didn't like be it. doing that. This is my favorite bread. It's Dave's Killer Bread. And there's a bunch of different types of this bread. And look at how, how many seeds are on here. It's packed full of nutrition. One time I heard somebody say, the whiter the bread, the faster you're dead. <laughs> so I try to get like whole wheat bread. Um, I used to hate mushrooms. I hated mushrooms for the longest time, but they're really versatile. You can make mushroom gravy, you can put them in meatballs, kind of bulk them up a little bit, get a little more extra pizzazz in there. I like mushrooms. Um, yeah, they go I've well in everything. Them. I usually, I, sometimes I'll just eat them as is. Yep, portobello mushrooms, delicious. Um, of course, so, so pasta, all dried pasta is vegan, but not like, not all, hold on. All dried pasta, for the most part, is vegan, unless it says it's egg pasta. But if you want fresh pasta, then it's usually vegan. But any dried pasta is vegan. And of course, you know, gotta make some sauce so you can get some tomatoes. Not that canned stuff. No, don't be getting, make your own sauce. It's, it's not that hard. Yeah, no, it's actually really easy. You just like put s some diced tomatoes in there and then you add or all of this. crushed tomatoes and. You like, what is it called? Where you kind of like boil out the, the water. Mm -hmm. You, um, it's a word for that. Shoot. <laughs> um, but yeah, you just kind of like boil out the water, reduce it, reduce it, yeah, you reduce it down, and then you add some just like a bunch of different seasonings salt, pepper, oregano, um, like herbs de Provence, yeah, <laughs> tofu. This is like what's given vegans a bad rep is tofu, but I just think people have tried tofu. And they tried it soft. And personally, I don't like soft tofu. She loves soft tofu. I grew up on tofu, though. <laughs> like, that, I, I've been eating it since I, That was, like, one of the first things I've ever eaten was, like, soft tofu. But I like it kind of, like, a little bit more firm. Extra firm. Extra firm. Mm -hmm. This is extra firm, isn't it? No, that's silky. Oh. Anyway. That's for my hot pot. But what you do with it, 
if you're new to tofu and you want to give it more of like a kind of like a chicken texture what you do is you well do you freeze it first and then press, press it, it. Well, actually i have i have it in my in the freezer if you want to show them what it looks like so you press it we have this thing you can buy off of wherever amazon was you don't even need one you just need to put like paper towels on top of it and put like a heavy book or a heavy saucepan on top of it and then you can press it for like 20 30 minutes and then once you do that, all the, all the moisture is out and then you can toss it in the freezer, which will help give it like that extra meaty texture. It's in a Ziploc bag in the freezer. Oh. Yep, 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 under that. On the other, yep, under that. Oh yeah. And then freezing it, another game changer. Freeze it and like, then unfreeze it when you want to use it. Really firms it up. So then you can just like store it like this. Yeah, it turns a little orangish, but it'll turn back to its normal color once you un um, defrost it. Was this like the same thickness as this one? Yeah. So like, it's like half the thickness now. So you you press it and it squeezes out all the water and then you freeze it. And then when you cook it up, it's, it's way better. It's well, you firm. Pressing you can fry it, it. You don't really have to freeze it, but pressing it is the most important part because when you press it, then the tofu um, is able to absorb all of the um, all of the taste, all of the juices from whatever you put it in, um, and then it'll actually absorb the flavor a lot better than if you just like tossed it in without pressing it. That's why it's nasty if you don't do that. She's the cook. I don't know much about it. I just know how to snack. <laughs> what else? Speaking of snacking, mayo. You know, you might be missing, you know, some sandwiches here. I, don't, I took off the label. We just put it in the fridge like this, but this is uh, like deli meat. Deli meat. Yeah. It's, I think it's made out of uh, soy as well. And then here's some vegan mayo. I think it's made out of, let's just find out. I think it's made Coconut of or something. canola, canola, brown rice syrup, apple cider vinegar, soy, sea salt, mustard, lemon made out of plants of course it is easy um and then this cheese vegan cheese is hard to find vegan good vegan cheese is hard to find this is um who's that what's the brand do you remember you'll find it right next to this mm -hmm. which is usually next to this mm -hmm. so the, all these are usually like right next to each other but this cheese is pretty good it melts nice yeah um you can put it i put it in sauces and stuff and you can put it on sandwiches this is like a tomato cayenne cheese they have creamy cheese yep delicious different types of milk the new milk that we're on right now the new milk kick is the oat milk it's didn't really, have really oat good milk today so i got cashew but cashew is really good too almond soy hemp hemp rice so many different kinds of milk yeah i like oat milk because it's super creamy this is like the extra creamy. Um, it's good for sauces. I make Alfredo with this, but cashew is good too. It's nice and creamy as well. It's good for sauces. Oops. Okay, onion, of course, just your basic necessity, onions and potatoes. Um, yeah, when you go through like the, the produce aisle and then you can just like, there's all of these things that like open up like new possibilities now, like apples you can snack on it by having like apples and peanut butter and pears and pears just taste good by themselves and the same thing with kiwis and then you know celery that's another thing as i didn't take out but peanut butter like all of this fresh produce like you know like you can walk into it like what do vegans eat and then you walk into the produce aisles like well all of this like is on the table still and then there's like some of these things that we're showing you which are kind of like like kind of oddities or Maybe like things that not necessities, not necessities, but delicious anyway. Yes, <laughs> make your life easier, makes it more um, like normal, I guess. Like if you're coming from, a, you're not got Jack's in the background <laughs> yawning. Uh, yeah, if you're just like used to eating, you know, deli meat, there's a substitute for it. Or if you're used to eating, you know, chicken, you can make it out of tofu. Or seitan. Speaking of meat yeah. substitutes, okay, so what? I haven't been vegan for very long. I've only been vegan for like two years. And at first I was like, why would I, why would I 
eat like weird meat substitutes but i found some very delicious ones and i'm like kind of a picky eater when it comes to that very expensive those are expensive these are probably three to four times the amount that like regular beef is but no one got hurt it's better for the environment better for your health shouldn't be eating ground beef like more than once a week anyway yeah and that's another thing is um like who like say for instance like tacos like i remember when growing up we'd make tacos and it would just be like there's meat and you got some lettuce on there and then you put some cheese on it and that's that's it but now like when we make tacos it's like this is just a small fraction of what is actually in our tacos now it's like we have rice and we have a little bit of Beyond Meat. They actually don't even use Beyond Meat, I use the crumbles, which are way cheaper. Oh yeah. The crumbles are way cheap. We actually have some in the fridge. And we have, uh, and then you put pico on there and you put guac on there and you put- Black beans. Black beans. Corn. Black beans, that's, a, that's like so cheap. Like why not do half and half? You can do a little bit of, you know, Beyond Meat and then for the other half do some kind of bean. And then it's still, it's all protein. Beans, and, corn, rice, cilantro, it's delicious. Yes, and then when you have all these like different types of like ingredients into it, it just comes together and it's so much, it's so much like, there's so much more taste to it. It's prettier too, you get so many more colors in it instead of just meat and lettuce and cheese. And that's <laughs> <so> sad. <laughs> um, but more meat substitutes. Those are my snacks. Those are like my major snacks lately. So, loves chicken nuggets. They're really delicious and sometimes I use them like I'll make mashed potatoes and gravy and corn and we use these as kind of like a little chicken, chicken on the side. It's really like honestly, it's just like these except for they've been breaded and fried. And you can actually, you don't even have to find these frozen. You can find like dried um, meat substitutes. Like the Asian markets are a really great place to find meat substitutes. Um, Amazon is a really great place to find like dried meat substitutes that you just need to rehydrate and then you can like fry them up and they're just as delicious and they're cheap. They're very, very cheap. Yeah, cause like I did this video a long time ago for a guy who was running some, uh, there's like a, a business that sold food and he had this video where he took chicken and he put it inside this thing that had like holes in the bottom of it and he put the chicken in, in there for a day and then the chicken like was like mostly like not mo maybe not mostly but like a large percentage of the chicken was just water so if you go onto amazon or wherever and you just type in or you search for soy curls they're, they're so good mm -hmm. and they're they're dehydrated so you get so much like in this package and then when you add water to them they expand which is you know it gives you yeah our textured, um, textured vegetable vegetable protein, or um, yeah, if you search like um, Asian vegan proteins, there's gonna be a lot of them out there. Or seitan. Seitan. That's so good. Like, it's just like flour, and then you take that flour, you you add some water to it, and then you throw it in the oven. You bake it like a piece of bread or whatever and then you can cut it up and then you can cook it just as you would cook any other type of meat. That's probably like my favorite type of meat alternatives and that's like so cheap. It's like this Beyond Meat and Impossible Meat is really, really expensive, but it's not the only option. And tofu and seitan, I, I, those are probably like cheaper than like standard. You can buy a block of tofu. I mean, it's a little more expensive at like normal grocery stores, but if you go to the Asian market, they're like less than a dollar per block. And then the newest addition to our kitchen is just egg. Yay! Also, like, I would also say this is a little more expensive than buying eggs, but like far less cholesterol. It's made out of mung bean. Mung bean. Um, really delicious. Can't do poached eggs quite yet, which I still kind of miss. Um, but you can make really great scrambled eggs. They're like super nice and fluffy and delicious. Yeah, really awesome scrambled eggs. And then they also have Beyond Meat uh, sausage, patties. sausage patties. They go great with it. And then you take some of this French bread and slice it up and you have, I have breakfast. this, yeah, I have this breakfast that I never thought I'd be able to enjoy again because I like, that was one of my favorite things growing up is eggs, toast, sausage, loved it. 
and I was like, dang, like, I'm missing out on that. But um, then I found this, just egg made out of mung beans. Another, another thing I, I noticed lately is um, when somebody talks about this type of stuff, like they're like, oh, well, it's just a bunch of uh, chemicals and it tastes like plastic. And, but if you read the ingredients on it, it's like water, mung bean, canola oil, and like some other vegetables and plants. So like, it's just made out of plants. All this stuff is just made out of plants. And you can't go wrong by eating plants. As far you as got a lot of preservatives in your meat. Yeah. There's a lot more And antibiotics, there. animal suffering. Um, yeah. Who knows what else is in there. <laughs> And last but not least, okay, so we haven't tried these yet, but we used, we had like similar sausages before. Check it out. So I'm excited to try this. I think this will be good. It's made out of tofu, vital wheat gluten, that's seitan, canola oil, water, soy sauce, tomatoes. That's it. Soy flour. Yeah. That's it. And some uh, seasonings. Simple. Easy. What the majority of the world lives off of rice and beans. And this is beans. And what's, you know, what's cheaper than beans and rice? Like, it's like the, the cheapest it gets. Cause there's, I feel like there's a huge misconception that eating vegan is really expensive. But I actually read that there was a study that they did recently where they found that vegans spend 4% less on groceries. So, I mean, I, if you, buy a bunch of Beyond Meat and, and chicken nuggets. It's gonna get kinda pricey. It's gonna get pricey. But today, okay, we didn't get everything today, but we got the majority of the stuff today and it was 50 bucks. I got the Beyond Meat, got the chicken nuggets, all the veggies that you see here, um, salsa, fruits, um, and yeah, 50 bucks. This, all of this total, um probably be about 70. and that'll that'll last us you know at least two or three weeks easy simple hope this helped you understand what some of your options are when you go to the grocery store i know i was kind of confused at first of like what do i eat do i just eat carrots and you know peanut butter and jelly sandwiches but no there's so many options and as the movement becomes bigger and bigger, it just becomes easier and easier.